we had been working um, um, half guard uh, passes, so I want to continue with it. I uh, gave different details on Friday and Saturday night, but I wanted just to expand it. Um, but, uh, most people were here for the drilling class. When you hit that sprawl pass, the idea is to end up two behind one, but a lot of times you're going to end up in half guard. So you're going to sprawl really aggressively and land, and as you're just driving up, you're going to think that you ended up two behind one, but you're going to end up in a half guard setup. Okay? So we're going to deal with the half guard. If you want to do the sprawl and end up there, fine. If you want to start it from here, then you're in this engagement. We're imagining that he's sitting up, and I got some inside wedge, and I take the knee line, and I step it through, and I step over this kneecap. And then the moment I stepped over the kneecap, we are going to pretend that we had head and arm. Okay, we dealt with last week where we couldn't get control of the head and arm and we had to sit the same way. This time we're getting head and arm. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you to focus on a couple of things. It's a pretty simple drill. Okay, you're gonna have to do it on both sides. We're gonna do a 90 seconds top player, 90 seconds bottom player. When you come up, okay, I'm gonna ask you to focus on a couple of things. Obviously, you would love to get this butterfly in. Okay, I know you would. Great. Sometimes it doesn't happen because you've been on so high up on your thigh and you're either wearing the gi pants or he's still dry or he's got those full shorts that have the, the, they used to have like this Velcro like rubberish. So once they've been on to your leg, you couldn't slide them off, okay? So I'm gonna ask you to have a couple of different focuses on this. We're gonna have our head and hand position on the mat. We're gonna have a hyper focus of where this, this front deltoid is sitting on the shin line. I mean, not on the shin line, on the jaw line, okay? I don't know if I'm gonna be able to grab his rear delt with this hand, I would love to. I would love to insert this middle finger behind that deltoid and get a good bite of it. But sometimes I won't be able to. So I'll describe why I wanna do certain things. I only want him to be able to turn that way, not this way. So if I've done everything right, a lot of times he'll release on this leg if I've given him so much torque on that draw line. So if I'm here, I have a hyper I'm not at his neck. I'm here driving at his chin to make him look one way. The second thing is my head and my hand are down, okay? The head and hand are down because I almost want them to be like two feet on this side that I don't get tilted over. So I'm not putting my hands together because if he bridges me hard, there's a chance that I could get flipped over. So I want to be able to extend this body line as far out as possible with my head and my hand. So my hand placement is straight. I also, sometimes in the beginning, you're not going to be able to do it, but I have a hyper focus of being in this triangle. Because the person on that triangle always tells you has a dominant advantage over the other person. Okay, so my head and my hand are here. I have a hyper focus of where my where I am on this chin line, and I'm driving up to go into a really great tripod set. I'm gonna ask you to do the drill where you insert differently than this. Okay, this is kind of money. If you can get here, great. I'll release the kneecap and I'll bring it either left or right. Okay. I'm gonna ask you, just for drill purposes, to bring your knee line in this way, okay? Good, yeah. Uh, bring your knee line in this way because all I really wanna do is free the kneecap. So if we talk about like one of the recoveries that they wanna do, sometimes they'll wanna butterfly this in on my inner thigh. So I'd love to stay on this side of the line so that as I'm driving, I'm putting my kneecap in here just to release my kneecap to get it out and bring my kneecap in front of his thighs. Once I get position of my kneecap, I'm gonna ask you, there's different ways you can cut this. You can cut it, we've been cutting this way, but today we're gonna to cut it this way. And I'm gonna tell you why, because I'm driving it so aggressively that way, a lot of times this is gonna be not the angle that's gonna be beneficial for me to cut it this way. I mean, to cut that way. So when you're here, and you're here, now you're here, and you're driving at this, okay? Yep. I'm here, I'm driving this guy in to pull this guy out. Once I get this guy out, we're gonna cut him to this side, okay? We can cut either way if you feel comfortable cutting to a mount, but for now, let's cut this way. Upon landing, I'm gonna use my back, my secondary foot, to release my other foot. Once I get here, I'm in a side control position. We're gonna start that way, and then we'll add submissions to it, okay? So you're tripoding up, you have a hyper focus of the draw line, okay? Your head and your hand should be on the mat. I just told you why you don't want to get reversed over that way. 
He's gonna have a free hand to buck you on that, on that hip line. I'm gonna ask you, you can butterfly it, but I'm gonna tell you if you don't add this little thing to it, and the player on the bottom, if he wants to bite on, even if he doesn't and he just lays here, practice it. Because what's gonna happen is he bit on so high on the thigh and now you can't butterfly and you can't butter and you're stuck on this tripod position and you can't release this kneecap because he bit on so high up the body line that you're trying your best. So the only position is to insert from here because if he's bit on so high up on this bite on high and I'm coming up on this tripod and now I'm over here trying to get my knee, I can't. So I gotta start fighting to get my knee line out with my other knee inserted. So as I get my knee line out, now I start dropping it. Once upon dropping, I'm laying on my side. I'm gonna use my free leg to free my other leg. Once I go into a side control set, then we'll take it from the next step on that. Okay guys, let's partner up here. Yeah. Upon landing, okay, so you went into the tripod. We're still gonna do the tripod. You're just landing. You cut it this way and you're here. My first reaction is I don't want to let this portion of this form butterfly over and get under my throat line, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is retract my hand back and get to the elbow line. My second reaction is, so I just landed, I just cleared the feet. My second reaction is I want to get control of this draw line. So that when I'm going to pivot, and this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to explain it really slow and I'll break it down. As I drop to come up, I control this elbow and I bury my head to that side. I don't want this coming over. So I'd love to be able to pull it and turn it. My elbow line is gonna come at this diagonal because I'm gonna spin off this kneecap to bring you up to a 45 to catch you into a knee pinch. So upon landing, this is where you were, okay? My first reaction is to put this hand over and bring this, uh, bring this forearm to the, to the draw line because I'm gonna manipulate the draw line this way now. So as I'm dropping this, I'm collecting this elbow and I'm pivoting this elbow. So my elbow line is gonna turn this way. Remember I said the elbows are the steering wheels, right? So off this kneecap, the line should turn this way. So the elbow line should be turned right towards this uh, shoulder line. And if I've dropped this right, I'm pivoting to catch over to the other side. Don't short yourself because if I do this, if I square this up, my angle is going to be off and burying this and controlling this because he really wants to pummel this over and get it underneath. Or he wants to pummel it to my throat line. So it's critical that I change my whole body line, that I take control of this forearm. Okay, so super slow, we'll just talk about it. We're here and I just drop. And as I'm bringing this up, I'm burying to capture so this guy doesn't come over. Remember what he wants to do? He wants to butterfly over the top. So the rotation is this way. So I'm pulling it opposite, okay? So also this elbow line doesn't stay squared to him. It pivots also because I wanna take total control of this form before it comes over. So I just dropped this. The moment I bring him up to a 45, this is where I should be. This should be, period, this should be tilted at 45, elbow line facing this bottom shoulder, okay? So now the whole body comes as a U set. Once he's up, okay? I know you're excited to step over to the other side. You don't need this at this point. So if I've done everything right, I take this hand and drop it and I make a far side wedge before you pull back. Now I'm free to step over and collect this. Upon collecting, this is where we are. I have a tight knee pinch. I make a small opening to start inserting my hand to the other side and I collect my Kimura and I can come right back on it, okay? Don't short yourself on your body lines. You turn as a package. So upon landing it, the first reaction is I want him up on a 45 because I may not go that way. I may look to take the neckline on a guillotine. You don't know where you're gonna play this out on. If he forces it back, then maybe I go to a mount. But I want him at a 45 because maybe I switch my lines and then I go darsing. I don't know, okay? But I want him at a 45 so that I can attack him and aggressively try to submit him. So upon landing, this is where we were. I just, I just slid out. My first reaction is where I was. I don't wanna go into a side control pin. I come over and I start bringing him up. As I'm bringing him up, my elbow's rotating. It's coming to his elbow. I said my bottom elbow is gonna start flaring downwards so that I don't let this elbow, this forearm come over the top. Once I've gotten this position, I make my far side wedge. I drop my knees and I go into my knee pinch. Remember what I said, I don't go vertical. 
okay? I really just want to affect the front deltoid so I'm not coming vertical because if you come vertical and he comes to a turtle position, you're gonna be late on that shoulder drop on the elbow to correct it. I don't wanna to get too complicated with it, but I'm gonna be late on other positions. So all I really wanted to do was affect the front deltoid. It's my lat muscle and the core strength in my body. It's just opening a small pocket. So I got a tight knee pinch. I don't come up. I always tell you know, I don't wanna give you a haircut, okay? So stay nice and low. I open up a small pocket. I switch my hands. I insert, I grab onto my Kimura. My first reaction is to go away before I come back. Okay, remember his grip and strength is hooking, so I don't wanna lift up. I wanna pull it away this way to come back over the top and then drop it to a finish. Okay, guys, let's part on, please. Okay, so you're doing tripod, come up, and we catch these guys. Okay. So I'd like to be able to do three different ones. So you're still doing a tripod, you're still cutting, you still come in here, and now you just open up this pocket and you come here. And now we've been doing this. We've been taking the arm and finishing it off. Sometimes you're gonna get a person that you're gonna feel like, wow, this guy's been onto his gi pants or he's got some crazy grips and you're like trying to open this up and you can't. So I'd like you to be able to finish that Henzo move that we talked about. You're gonna to touch onto this tricep. I'm gonna use this, this little, um, this little V shape is gonna stay in the middle. And I'm gonna shoot this hand long. I'm gonna capture this hip. And I'm gonna slide down and I'm gonna finish it like this, you okay? Okay, so that, so we're gonna do number one, number two, but then you're also gonna be here and you're gonna go, man, I can't get this guy down. So I'm flipping right back and I'm going straight into an arm bar set. I'm gonna ask you to take this leg and place it behind his hip line. There's a reason when I fall back that way and a big guy, he's gonna to try to roll with me and now you're gonna be in this position where you're on the bottom and he's on top trying to finish an arm bar and it becomes very difficult with a big guy. Everybody's been there, and I'll explain it right now. I come back here, and as I'm falling back, he's curling up, come with me. And now you're like this, trying to finish an arm bar, and you're facing down, and he's on top, right? So I want to prevent that. So I'm going to take this back leg, and I'm going to place it as a wedge underneath these hips. So I'm learning how to take this foot, put it as a wedge, so that when he curls up, he's going to go into that shin, an instep, okay? So as I'm learning how to flip, this is where we land. I'm just taking this leg out, coming back up, and I'm looking for this arm again. So I'm learning how to do all three. So I came in here, I did everything exactly the same. I come in here, I try to finish this off, not working, I come in here, try to finish this off, I can't get him to tap. I come in here, I flip back, and I turn back into an arm bar. So I'm learning how to do all three from both sides. So you have multiple combinations. You're going to more, dump, dump, dump. Guy's not separating his hands, you're going, damn, this is really hard. I can't finish him. I try to finish it at Henzo move. I'm trying to finish it, finish it. He's not going for it. I'm trying my best. He's so big, I can't get a good bite on it. I come right back up and I finish it to an arm bar for a reason because I want to bring my legs into the equation that I can finish him with a triangle, all these other positions that I can change this to. So I'm learning how to do all three so I have options to go to. Okay, guys, let's part of the video.